Whoa. <laughs> That's all I can really say about this. Whoa. The reason I say whoa, folks, is because this is a special occasion. But before I bring in this special occasion, first off, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two-time Loser's Orange member of the year and optimistic Hall of Famer, the Healist of Ballers. Okay, so let me see. I forgot to put this right here. Let me put the cake right here. Let me put the presents right here. Oh, 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 recording. Oh, oh, hello. Hello, everybody. Um, You know me. I'm going to do my introduction. You guys know who I am. I'm the Healist of Ballers. I just did my introduction anyways. Sim okay, Balor, so Prince Balor, we all know the freaking rest. That's long gone, dude. Yeah, so is your previous <laughs> name. Yeah, you, when you were first part of a podcast with us, you used to be known as, what was the name? Honestly, I cannot remember. Mr. Swag, I think. Mr. So, Swag, yeah, Mr. Swag. <laughs> that one is Prince Balor, now I'm Neil Balor, and then there were so many names before that. But yeah, there's there's my lineage on my names, folks. Yeah, indeed. But no oh, matter, throughout sure. any podcast, I was always Christian Miracle. Yep. Huh. Ryan was Ryan, and then there's Kelsey. It was always Kelsey. Then Connor was always, well, Connor had a few names. <laughs> Connor, Riley, BC, and Rollins. Yep. But our, Ryan. But our all time favor, and that's just simply Connor. Oh, yeah. Connor, Ryan, Kelsey, Willie, Christian. The Furious Five, or at least that's what I was initially going to call us, and then I realized I would get copyrighted. That was actually not our initial name, I don't think. No, well, it was not. Was you guys <laughs> were just guests on my podcast that one time. Yep. I remember that day. I remember, yeah, I think it was Carter who asked me, you know, he said, like, you know, Christian doing a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, really? And the history was made. History was indeed like, made. <laughs> it's a story we've told several times. Yeah, for real. Go back and listen to our old stuff. Seriously. It's, yeah, stuff. it really is. Look back through our old stuff, our previous 99 episodes, because ladies and gentlemen, this is our big 100th podcast! Woo! 100 episodes. Wow. And it's unfortunate that, you know, Connor Riley, Rice to Ryan, and Kelsey are not here, because, like, well, for Kelsey's reason, she's moved on with her life. We can still keep in touch. Connor, mm -hmm. um, I believe the Mavericks are playing on this day. And plus, he's got his own stuff going on, and he's been doing fabulous ever since a year ago. He got baptized. Much love, my brother. Yeah, he's Much been, love. He's been getting closer to his relationship with God, and at the same, which has actually allowed him to look at life in a better way. So it could happen with you if if that's your religion, anyway. Spiritual view, religion, whatever you want to talk about. Ryan, he just got back from a trip. Yeah, he went on vacation to Arizona, I believe. Yes. With some friends of his, just, we see the pictures. It looks amazing. He misses so you guys. We miss him. Yep. I know for a fact all three of them are happy for us. But here we're here to represent the Losers Lounge. Willie, he's been on almost every single one of the podcasts. I've missed like I think two. One I was sick, and the other one for some okay funny story for one one episode like I couldn't make it because like. So, long story short, like, a tree fell down our front yard, and our internet went out, and we had to go to a hotel, and long story short, I couldn't make the podcast, so, you know, I only missed two episodes, but every single episode I've been on. Yep. <laughs> that would mean in a couple of episodes, you will have been in 100 episodes. Mm hmm That was awesome. And yes, uh, as for me, well, this is my channel, but that doesn't mean I've been on every podcast. No, I missed, Christians like, missed a few. I've missed several, five, six, seven, something like that. Heck, there were times we had to freaking host the thing without him. Yeah, that is true. That's the, that's the point of what I said when I said I missed it, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, um, we didn't have any special big things going on for this podcast. It's just Heel Balor and myself. There's no guests, and there's no big fireworks. Oh, wait, look, there's a firework. Yeah, there's one more, too. Oh, there we go. Okay, I guess we kind of did have it. But, you know, it's okay. What better way to celebrate the 100th episode than to do what we do best? Entertain. That's what we do. Exactly. And we're here to talk and predict the events of this upcoming week as pay-per-view NXT's Halloween Havoc. Mm -hmm. Halloween Havoc, which was initially a WCW pay-per-view from like 1989 until 2000. And here's the thing. 
if you got the WWE Network, or at least I don't know how if it works on Peacock or anything. Willie, does there WCW events on Peacock? Yes. Okay, good. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Okay, good. So that way, folks, go ahead and go on a little marathon event of WCW's Halloween Havoc events if you want to, because those were always fun to watch. There you go. I've seen a few of them. I sinned one of them, and I'm looking to hopefully get into more WCW sins in around 2023, hopefully. You know, fingers crossed. There you go. go. But there's a lot of WWE stuff that I want to, you know, cover, because my intention is to sin the entire WWE pay-per-view library. This man puts in the effort on his videos. That's what's up. That's what's up indeed. And also, folks, I next week you'll start Camp WWE Season 2 sins. I freaking love Camp WWE. Yep. They should renew the season, that show. It's so good. The season finale. Well, here's the thing, actually. Uh, have you seen the end? Have you seen the last episode, Willie? No. Okay. Well, spoiler. Al- do you want me to spoil you? I don't care. Don't worry. Spoiler alert: Everybody dies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's. I don't <laughs> think that's. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just tell you more about it, folks, in the when I get to that sins video. But anyways, I will say that um. So the season one finale is available now for sin on my channel right now. Go check it out if you haven't already. And people, have, I don't know why people have been telling me that they keep seeing like a, the date of Christmas on there. I don't know what they're talking about, but okay. It's not well. To be fair, it's almost Christmas time, so I yeah. guess I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, perhaps maybe they're just seeing things. Yeah. Anyways, much. though. Yeah, I'm hoping to get to more WCW events because there's a lot of them that uh you know that are worth sin. And there's a, a there's a pay per view library of over 110 pay per views. I've already done one, so one down and maybe 110 to go. <laughs> Jeez. But I am getting closer and closer to reaching 300 WWE pay per views. Send. Again, this man puts in the effort. Yeah. That's what's that's what's what's going on. This man knows what he's talking about. Indeed. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people who watch these videos also know what they're talking about. So I give you props. Heck yeah. NXT's Halloween Havoc is this upcoming Saturday. It is the second of five pay-per-views this fall. We've had Extreme Rules. We got Halloween Havoc this Saturday. Then we got Crown Jewel. Then we got AEW's Full Gear. And then WWE Survivor Series War Games. And all that before the Christmas holidays. The losers are going to be taking time off until the Royal Rumble. Yeah, <laughs> we were initially going to be doing day one, but folks, that got canceled. Yay! Well, not, not really yay, but... Not the podcast. Yay. Not the podcast, yeah, not but the, the event podcast, itself. So we're not canceling that. <laughs> yeah, the event itself got canceled. So, uh, yeah, after we're done talking Survivor Series War Games, uh, we're going to be off for nearly two months. Yes, that's sir. fine, though, because I will still have a crap ton of content heading your way, including some new concepts that I have I idealized for 2023. I'm excited to share with you guys with that stuff. Oh, yeah. And Heel Balor, of course, he's entertaining as hell. He's got o- almost 17,000 followers on Twitter now. Yeah, it's 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 a chore, ladies and gentlemen. It's a chore. <laughs> kind of is, yeah. He's kind of been like uh, uh, the target for a lot of things. But, hey, he's cool. Yeah. I've been cool for a he, long time. So, for those who've been supporting myself and, of course, Christian, you know, speaking for myself, you know, as the lose, fellow loser, you know, we appreciate what you guys have done for us, you know, over these 100 episodes, we appreciate you guys. You're coming in and listening to us. You know, we might not be everyone's cup of tea. We talk about things you know, other podcasts don't talk about, but we're entertaining as hell, and that's all that matters. Is that you guys are still here and you're still listening to us, even if it's just been me and Christian these past few two years, I think, two-ish years now. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, we appreciate y'all from bottom of our hearts. We love you guys, and uh, yeah, thank you all for 100 episodes, man. And um, yeah, what a better way to talk about that um. Talk about Halloween Havoc, and uh, should we touch on um, a little bit having this week, Christian, or should we just move on into what happened? Because I think the folks want to know our opinions on this week, the big week. The big week? You mean that big week? Yeah, that big week. That yeah. big week. That big week, yeah. Huh. That big. I run on the, I run on the uh, freaking cow over there. Yeah, that big week right there. For the record, I'm tra- for the record yeah. what, what exactly are you talking about? Oh, NXT and um, AEW this past week. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no one gives a shit about that. Exactly. It was moving on. That whole thing was uh, them going head-to-head with each other because of the results of Major League Baseball, the NBA, and apparently the NHL. Which actually has me wondering, shouldn't shouldn't baseball be done by now? 
Yeah, like seriously. They usually they're usually dumb enough. Mama Miracle, who's also a big sports fan, she even touched on that. She was like, "What is going on here? Why do they do this?" Probably because there's no other sport out there, honestly, besides those three things. Not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, of course, you know, same thing going on with like um, with hockey. Now they're starting. Oh yeah. They're starting now. I mean, my friends watch hockey, so there's that. <laughs> So that so basically we got we got baseball, football, basketball, and hockey all at the same time now. That's uh not usually how it's supposed to go, but you know it's fine. Regardless, that's that was the whole sports thing. But we're not here to talk about the sports thing. We're here to talk about NXT Halloween Havoc. Sports entertainment. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk what's going on in Halloween Havoc. We got six matches on the card, and five out of six of them are stipulated. Just like Extreme Rules, which coincidentally was very, you know, heavy with all that stuff, too. Well, it's so weird. I think my friend mentioned this yesterday. Um, like, it's so weird that one show a few weeks ago with Extreme Rules, very, you know, heavy with the stipulation, that kind of stuff. Now, how we'd have it, it's like another sti- stipulation show. And then I think a few weeks after Crown Jewel, another, s- well, not stipulated, no, well, I guess, well, there's one, two stipulated match, but still, you know, they're just filling themselves up this year. <laughs> They really are. They really are. We've had a lot they of are. crazy shit going on. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how we should do this. I think we'll just go like we usually do with our deal. That is the non-title matches first. Sounds good with me. So, Willie, are you ready to spin the wheel and make the deal? Coincidentally, I actually have a wheel right next to me. Let me All spin right. it. No, legitimately, I do, actually. Okay, spin it. There it is. Not now, kitty. Exactly. The cat's right next to me. The cat's be part of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. Okay, it landed, Christian. All right, what did it land Look what it on? says. Look what it says. Aha, uh-huh, it says Apollo Crews versus Grayson Waller. Oh, joy. <laughs> so, yeah, Apollo Crews, folks, we did not touch on this before because we didn't really talk much about it, is on NXT now. Yeah, and because he's basically just there. No, literally, he's there. <laughs> yeah, that's he's literally right it. there doing nothing, honestly. It's with Grayson Waller, which is sad. Anyways. Yeah, whatever happened to like the big, uh, big momentum that Grayson Waller was on? No comment. I don't <laughs> like Grayson Waller. <laughs> Guess it did not work. Anyway, so um, with this whole thing going on here, mm-hmm. uh, the we right now, folks, as of this podcast, we don't know what the stipulation is. We do know it's going to be stipulated at some point. I guess we're going to find out on Saturday. What if we can make predictions about what it could be? There's so many stipulations, though, and we can't name all of it. All right. Well, that actually would be a good idea. Let's uh, figure this out. It's a Halloween theme, so we got to figure something out. What would be a stipulation that you normally put on these t- type of wheels for Halloween Havoc? Trick or Street Fight. We got a, um, I think someone mentioned, like, an Inferno match. No, it's Chucky. Chucky mentioned, like, an Inferno match. That'd be insane. Well, um, since, Chuck, well since Chucky mentioned, wait, are we talking the actual doll here? Yes, the actual doll showed up in NXT. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he likes it there. This is not the first time he's been there. Might as well have him be the GM. Even though there's no GM on NXT anyways, but might as well. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, if they're going to be like some sort of Inferno match, I mean, what do you bet that Chuck is going to have some sort of influence on this? Yes, I could see that. Honestly, with how insane Chuck is, check out Chuck also, by the way, in the USA Network, very good show. Um. Yeah, I can see Chucky somebody being involved in the story, you know, which he, I guess he uh, kind of is. I don't freaking know. They just brought him in for this week, but I don't know, honestly. I can see it happening. Yeah, uh, I like that one match you suggested at the first one, Trick or Street Fight. Yes, sir. Yep, that's been known to have been a stipulation for previous events before. Trick or Street Fight. <laughs> yep. Uh... Not to mention, actually, last year's Halloween Havoc, Chucky actually was there as well, and he did a Chucky's Choice. He did. Yeah, really so that could be the case. And also, another stipulation possibility could be Lumber o Lantern. Lumber o Lantern. You gotta admit, that was honestly not that cool. <laughs> nah, well, it was <laughs> We do have a ladder match to also take a place at Halloween Havoc, which we'll get to later, but they should honestly refer to that as their that Scareway to Hell match. Yes, please. <laughs> because that was funny. 
Oh, that how about this right here? May, how yeah. about the member of the time, Johnny Organo, Damian Priest, and Halloween Havoc took fought in the Devil's Playground match? That was really fun. Really, really fun. Perhaps I Apollo and that. Grace could be in that? I could see it. Or maybe they could be in a match that we don't even know exists yet. Chucky's Playhouse match. I don't freaking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be like crazier than the Firefly Funhouse. Well, that's over with, so at least I think it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, pretty much yeah, it's, it. it's like uh, been abandoned, covered in cobwebs, and everybody's dead, so uh, yeah. Like, okay. uh, so that's where our podcast was a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> at least we made sure to clean it while we were out. Exactly. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know. I see what match they could do for um, Grayson Waller and uh, Cruz, honestly. But as for who's going to win, who do you pick? Easily Apollo Cruz because I despise Grayson Waller. I'm no a... joke, people. Like my friends know, especially how much I don't care for Grayson Waller. Character wise, folks, not personally. He's he's yeah, you know, very entertaining, but still, of course you know, not. Character wise, screw up. <laughs> You're going for Apollo <laughs> Cruz for no reason other than you hate Grayson Waller. Understandable. I, on the other hand, I'm actually thinking Grayson Waller is going to win. Leave the show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. As you can <laughs> the show, the podcast ends. So we oh, can't okay, leave. Oh, okay. Then we're just going to dump our 100th podcast episode like that. Yep. Yeah, I'm kidding. No, no, no. We're not going <laughs> Yeah. All right. Why don't you run over to uh, the uh, winner's uh, window podcast or something? That's a true show. Well, well um, as long as I don't talk about it, I don't freaking know. <laughs> nah, it's, nah, it's not, nah, it's not a show. It's hosted by n- nobody who actually enjoys wrestling. Oh, well, there you go. It makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you pick Apollo Crews. I got Grayson Waller. We're half and half on that. Maybe, hopefully, we can do that with the other matches. Oh, Christian, did you know in the storyline, for some reason, their eyes are bleeding? Yes, I also noticed that, and, uh, wow. I don't know why that's happening. I think he has pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but okay. Don't search it up. Like, don't. They're period. No, All right, don't then, search <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on, we're gonna move on to the next match. Let's spin the wheel yeah. and make the deal. All right. Oh, 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 it's, it's on a... Roxanne Perez Ooh. versus Cora Jade. Ooh, rematch. Yep, Let's do rematch. It. This is a match, and it's known, it was also spun on a wheel, and it is known as the Weapons Wild match. Now, what why does that sound like something in the Wild West? Weapons Wild. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just see. If they're, if one's on one side of the ring and the other's on the other and they're slowly reaching toward their pistol. Is it bad that I want to see that? I mean, as long <laughs> as it doesn't actually kill them, yes. Exactly. Do it. <laughs> we should actually play the good, the bad, and the ugly theme. Dude, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. <laughs> the robbery's been pretty fun. I'm not going to like yeah, they're former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, but for whatever reason, uh, afterwards, uh, like the Cora J just like turned on Roxanne Perez right after they won, kind of similar to when Dean Ambrose did the same to Seth Rollins when they became Tag Team Champions. Yeah, we don't talk about that though. Anyways, yeah, we do. I'm enjoying the story. Oh well, yeah, we do. We just want thing for it. Anyways, um, I've been enjoying Cora's heel turn. It's very. It, it reminds me of now. This is their idols, of course, so I can understand why they're doing this. Reminds of AJ Lee and Paige. I'm sorry, Soraya Page. Anyways, rather right that storyline, you know, Cora dumping the belt in the um, the trash can. Yeah, like she was a Lundra um, Blaze. Stuff. Yeah, dude, it's it's really been good. You know, abandoned in the friendship, saying she was the lackey, you know, all kind of stuff. She attacked her in the parking lot. They had their match at uh, what was the last match they had? Uh, what they show? Faced off, they faced off at NXT's Heat Wave. Anyway, there it was, yeah. yeah. Cora won that match, so might yeah. as well do the rematch here. Yeah, and uh, they were hosted, they were like guests of the Grayson Waller effect. Again, gross. Hey, look, we're talking was Grayson too- Waller again. Again, I was I was too busy flipping off my TV to pay attention to them, so. Oh, just, just like when you see Hulk Hogan on the screen. No, because unlike Hulk Hogan, I can actually, no, unlike Grayson Waller, I can somewhat stand Hulk Hogan. Somewhat. And that is actually a big shocker. Yes, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> but, but still, but still, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, um, Roxanne, <laughs> I believe Roxanne Perez had you know won the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament at some point this year, and right after they won the tag team titles, you know, 
Roxanne looked to cash in her tournament on the NXT Women's Style Match with Mandy Rose, and of course, Cora Jade got Ooh. jealous. Ooh, the jealousy in storylines. I like those kind of storylines. Dolph like. Ziggler, it should have been me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we've all had that before. Oh, for real. I think, let's be honest, everyone in life has had at least one moment where they look at somebody they actually care for, and they're going to be like, it should have been me. Oh, for real, it's happened many times. Like, don't lie to people, you've had that in your life. Yeah. Seriously. I've had it. I've, I've had, had it, too. Actually. Obviously, yeah. we're not gonna. Obviously, we're not gonna dig into details because that's kind of our personal yeah. life. Yeah, but but uh, we get the point. It. Yeah. So, yeah. In this case, a weapons wild match. What in the hell is that? Weapons everywhere. I'm guessing, like around the the <laughs> the ring, all kind of stuff. Maybe with the fans. Maybe it could have been a silent match. Nah. Please, yes. Nah, I'll be honest. Actually, I, don't, I don't think they would have called it Weapons Wild if they did that. I mean, Garen, I know there's weapons actually surrounding the area, but, you know. Sounds like NXT's version of, like, an Extreme Rules match. Yeah, I'd probably say it's like an Extreme Rules match or, a, like, a hardcore match or a barbed right. wire death match. Well, we're not going to go that far, but still. They'll do, I don't know, I know, I know what they're going to do. They're going to, it's going to be one of those, um... Freaking um, exploding barbed wire death matches. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, and here's the thing: just to prove a point to AEW, they'll actually blow up the ring, which ends up blowing up everyone in the arena, and then blows up the performance center. Oh well, they'll build a new performance center. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's dead inside, replaced. but you know, everything everything's okay. They did it. They'll just replace the fans with robots. <laughs> <out in> there. <laughs> okay, that just got dark. But anyway. anyways. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, as we also know, this past on SmackDown and Raw, Roxanne and Cora each got to pick the um, do the whole pick your poison for NXT. I was a TNA back in the day. Yeah, and each of them got to pick the opponent for the other. An example, like Roxanne Perez picked Raquel Rodriguez to take on Cora J, while Cora picked Rhea Ripley to take on Roxanne Perez. Cora won her match. Roxanne got destroyed. Yeah, that's because it's Rhea motherfucking Ripley. And to be fair, it was Rhea's first match back in like four months, so why would you ever lose? Come on. That is true. As far as I'm concerned, Rhea Ripley is still owed a Raw Women's title match. Oh, by the way, folks, as of recording, you know, 200 days as Women's Champ, you know, um, you know um, uh, we got uh, Bianca Bella over here, so congratulations to her. Good stuff, good stuff. Congratulations. That's uh, reminded me. That so actually um, that actually brings up a valid point on something. Like she makes history. What you got? She does. She's the Mind actually, if I say it or you want to say it? You know, yeah, yeah, honestly, you should go ahead and say it. You're black. Of course, Brother Miracle. So, Bianca Belair makes history. 200 days. She is the first and so far only person, male or female, to be black and hold a championship in world wrestling entertainment. Uh, first and, actually. But not first. No, my bad. Not first. Yeah, well, first, yeah, first. Yeah, not no, only. no, no, no. <laughs> my bad. No. Oh, actually, this is actually what I, I think this is what we actually meant. Uh, no, um, Bianca Belair is the first all-black woman to be a champion for oh, 200 okay, straight okay. days. I got amazing job. Because when you mentioned, like, the first black person to be a champ for 200 days, I, there's an entire list. Oh, yeah, there is. New my day. Bad. New day. 480 days as tag champs. Exactly. Shelton Benjamin. Velveteen Dream. The Rock. Hey. Big Bobby Lashley. Yeah. <laughs> wait, Bobby. Wait, when did Bobby Lashley talk for 200 days? Oh, wait, never mind. No, he didn't. Never mind. No, he didn't. <laughs> but anyways, you get my point. I'm like... He was almost there, guys. <laughs> yeah, Bianca... Here's a... Ronda Rousey. She's only 116th black. Bianca Belair is all black. Yeah. So there's, the, di there's the difference yeah. here between her and Ronda. Yes, sir. But yeah, so Bianca Belair is the first all black woman to be a champion for 200 consecutive days in WWE history. Which is a very big feat to accomplish, honestly. Congratulations to her. Yep, congratulations indeed. So, Good stuff. Anyways, back to the match. But back, back to what we were saying. Yeah, I believe Rhea Ripley's owed a Raw Women's title match at some point. I guess it was, supposed to, happen, it. <laughs> it was supposed to happen at Money in the Bank, and it did not. Anyways, though, yeah. spin the wheel, make the deal. It's the Weapons Wild match. I predict Roxanne Perez to win. Yeah, Roxy's gonna Roxy, Roxanne, what do you wanna call it? Roxanne, Roxy, she's gonna win the match. I've heard that she's been uh, she's been uh, very impressed she has impressed WWE officials based on her SmackDown performance. Yes, she has been. Good. 
She's talented. And so is Cora. Cora's great. She dude, she's doing great in this heel role. Really good. Absolutely. This is why I have a great feeling that maybe these two will do wonderful under Triple H's regime whenever they get called up to the main roster. Oh, for real, man. The HHH regime so far is doing great. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Woo! Yeah. We on a celebration yeah. for a lot of things. All right. No reason to spin the wheel make the deal because there's only one non-title match left on the card, so we're going to move on to that, and that is Julius Creed versus Damon Kemp in an ambulance match. And if Julius loses, Brutus Sweet. Creed will have to leave NXT. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. That's, that's oh, well. <laughs> that's bad. That's bad, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. That's bad. <laughs> yep. The Creed brothers were attacked by Damon Kemp in NXT's Worlds Collide. My God. That was a... Uh, as a result, they lost the NXT Tag Team Championships to Pretty yep. Deadly. Gross. Anyways. What? Don't you like Pretty Deadly? Nope. They're sexy. No, they're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> you can tell. You can like. They, I can name many things that are sexy. But oh, you want to fight? It. You want to fight? Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's go. Mm, Come on, mm, let's go. Mm, 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 mm. Wait, Christian, we got someone out the door. Yeah, let me see. Who's out the door? Oh, it's the cops. Oh crap! They're, they're, they're telling us to stop. Uh, he did it. <laughs> he did it. No, he did it. Oh wait, they're sending me a paper. Here, read this. Oh, you guys are both idiots. Wow. Oh. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, anyways, back to our show. Yeah, Julius Creed's taking on Damon Kemp in an ambulance match, and like we said, Brutus has to leave NXT if Julius loses. However, yep. I will admit, though, I wouldn't totally be against Julius Creed working on his own. He has the ca talent. Yeah. <laughs> the talent. Brutus talent. could use some additional work. However, Julius has proven himself to be actually good in a singles action here. He's kind of like Jey Uso here. Yeah. Speaking of, I, good. Speaking of, I will also would not be against the Uso splitting up sometime down the line. Yes, main event Jey Uso comes back. Or main event Jimmy Uso, because Jimmy Uso's funny. Honestly, I yeah, think they yeah. both could hold their own. Oh, for real, dude. And just like I think that... In the case of this, Julius Creed and even Brutus could do well on his own. Julius is my favorite of the two. But Love at the Brutus, same time, I don't think we—I don't think any of us would want the Creed brothers to. If we want the Creed brothers to go on their own, that's cool. But I think they both deserve to at least stay on NXT. Then get called up and like have a dream match, like because the one dream match I want is them at the Usos. Please, yes, that would rule. Absolutely, one set of brothers versus another set. Yes, that's always fun to watch. Dude, and, um, obviously you know how an ambulance match works. Throw your opponent in the ambulance and close the door. Remember the great time when Roman Reigns took on Braun Strowman at the Great Balls of Fire event in 2017? They should bring that paper back. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, that was a very, very... Well, unfortunately, uh, they would, but the thing is, Jerry Lee Lewis charges a shit ton of money for his music. Never mind that. Yeah, and there's no way you can have a Great Balls of Fire event without the actual Great Balls of Fire song. Or balls. And they're on fire. What? Wait, never mind. That, 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 not my point, but anyway. Yeah. Goodness gracious, Great Balls of Fire! I remember when that paper was announced, I was very surprised. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also outside if you're wondering where I am. So, forget yeah. the birds and all that kind of stuff. I'm enjoying the sun. Enjoying the sun. For once, where he's at, it's actually warm. Meanwhile, up here, it's cold as hell, and I love it. Yeah, there you go. You're used to it. Over here, nah. <laughs> yeah, um... Anyways. But anyways, back to what I was saying. I like the moment Roman Reigns looked to spear Strowman. He ended up throwing himself into the ambulance, yep. and Braun just closed the door. Yep. <laughs> I was like, Classic. well, that counts. Yeah, it does. Doesn't matter how it Randy happens. Orton it just... back in time, I think match, too. I think the three stages of hell. Was it three stages of hell? I think it was. No, that... Randy Orton drew back in time. Was it? That was not three stages of hell. That was just an ambulance match. You're thinking of John Cena and okay. Ryback. That's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah, their third match in their three stages of hell match was an ambulance match where Cena hit the attitude just by Ryback through the roof of the ambulance. I'm like, that's got to be one weak roof. Exactly. I was like, how the hell does an ambulance roof just, like, fall like that? 
<laughs> it's made that way. I don't freaking know. It literally Honestly, is not. <laughs> so that was. If it was made like that, I wonder how like a heavy like you know set of rain. If it was raining heavily outside, I wonder how that would get fair with it. They let like, the roof would cave in. And, you know, poor person inside would get wet and possibly drowned. And anyways, <laughs> we're going to the place. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. So for this match, like here's the thing. If, if Julius wins, then cool. We got the Creed brothers to still be on NXT, and they'll probably still team up and probably move on to separate ways down the line. But then we got Damon Kemp. If he wins, well, it would be a shame that Brutus Creed would leave. But at the same time, it'd be nice to see Julius Creed, like, you know, work on his own. So this actually has a moment where I'm like, okay, there's a positive for both, but there's also a negative for both. It's kind of tough to think about. Sorry about that, Chris. I had to talk about my mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. But what do you think? What were you saying? About what? Like, do you think... On the match? Yeah, like, I'm just saying that there's a positive for each win, but there's also a negative for each win. Yes, there is, honestly. Um... <sighs> That's why it's kind of tough. Yeah, there is. I would just have... Hmm. I know it's like, I know it's a little bit early to have him lose, I just have Julius win. That's just me. It makes sense for the baby face to win. In the storyline, at least. Yeah, right now it seems to me like the big uh, feud right here is uh, the Creed brothers and Damon Kemp, not Julius sure. versus Brutus here. Yeah. It's out of Julius, uh, Julius win. Yeah, so um, at this moment, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead. I'll pick uh, Julius Creed to win as well. Yes, sir. What about you, Kenny? No? All right, fine. Anyways. Yeah, your cat doesn't care about NXT. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to move on to our first of three title matches. The first one being yes. the NXT Women's Championship. And this, so far, is yes. the only match that doesn't have a stipulation. That should change, though. Yeah, it might. Yeah, because, you know, we should have all six matches to be stipulated. Yeah, for real. The champion, Mandy Rose, who is almost... Hitting one year as champion, defending against Alba Fire, formerly Kaylee Ray. Yay. Okay, I, li- I like Kaylee. I like Alba Fire, but I, I like the Kaylee Ray game better. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, well, regardless, um, this is a moment where... Same person. Mandy Rose, the third longest reigning NXT Women's Champion, taking on the longest reigning NXT UK Women's Champion. Put some respect on her name. Or their name, actually. Yeah, put some respect on both their names. Yes, because they're very talented individuals. Mandy Rose has really proven herself to be worthy of the place where Thank she's at. Thank you. We said this several I've times been... on the podcast. I've been saying this many, many times, guys. It's not because she's hot. No, that's the that's the other reason. But the main reason, like you know, I've been saying that like, she's been improving. Yeah, like many her, times. I did not really care much for her a lot on the main roster because she was just you know being a sexy Barbie doll. If you think about, it, she looks like Barbie. Yeah, not that one. Yeah. Speaking of, Barbie's got a movie coming out next year. Yeah, Margot Robbie. Check yeah. it out. No, legit, Margot Robbie's great, so go check it out, please. Yeah. Who was playing Ken again? Who is playing Ken? I don't freaking know. Regardless, well... Uh, <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> should be weird, but... Um, We're here watching the uh, Barbie movie. I don't freaking care. We're the Losers Lounge, okay? Everything's off the cuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say for the case of Mandy Rose, when she won the title conveniently at last year's Halloween Havoc, Mm -hmm. when she beat Raquel Gonzalez at the time in a trick or street fight, that was the Chucky's Choice match. Yes, sir. She's held it ever since, and if she retains, if she wants to reach one year as champion, she has to go through Alba Fire. You think she can do it? Mm. Or is this the decision here? Um, well, this past week on XC, she stood, Alba Fire stood tall with the belt. Usually that means the person's going to lose. Not always. Um, not all, exactly. I was getting to that. I, as much as I love Mandy, I think there's two reasons she needs to lose. One, because she's held the title long enough. Do I want to see her reach a one year's champ? Of course I do. But I don't think it's going to happen. Two, her brother recently passed away, so I think she needs to go off, you know, and more than that. Rest her brother, by the way, and um, you know, she needs to go out and be a family and stuff like that, and you know, really cope inside that before she comes back officially all healed up and you know, spiritually and mentally. 
And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll bring up Todd's contraction to the main roster. The other factor is Sonya Deville. She's the other factor in this whole thing. Yeah. I wonder if Sonya is officially part of Toxic. That's the one thing I want to know. I think she's just affiliated with them for a while. I mean, it'd be nice to see a reunion with Maddie and Sonya. Might as well. I mean, that's <laughs> how you do it. You know, just do it right there. They're toxic. I don't know. Toxic Deville. That's not, that's just, that sounds pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Toxic Deville. <laughs> she kind of has been toxic. Like the time when she tried to have Bianca Belair sued. Yes. And she bullied Naomi for many reasons. And yeah, that's about it. Actually, we still don't know why. <laughs> Oh, I know why. I know why. I'm not gonna mention on the podcast. I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, calm down. Keep your panties in a keep your panties in a bunch. Okay, calm down. Not that. Anyways, wait. How did you know? Uh, how did you know I was wearing panties? You did. We share the same locker. For God's sakes. Oh yeah, forgot about that. We're on the same. Uh, we're on the same lounge. Remember? Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. yeah. The whole thing with Mandy Rose and Alba Fire. Um, I think it's honestly about time because. Seemed to me that they kind of were delaying this over and over so Mandy could feud with others. Correct, Mr. Miracle. Yeah, but I like that they're finally doing this at NXT's Halloween Havoc. Conve- I, I figured, Sir. you know, this could be Mandy's biggest challenge. And, well, um, Worlds Collide, she proved that she could do well when she won the NXT UK Women's title and did the big unification and- thing. I also wonder, though, that if maybe... If Mandy Rose retains, we could see down the line Mandy Rose and Mako Satomura. You know, that's another person people have been bringing up. I wouldn't mind it, honestly. Or, you know, my my thing was like, I would have, here's how I'd book it. Mandy would hold the title until 2023, which uh, she probably would. She would lose it to, um, well, this won't work, apparently, since this person might be getting called up very soon. I would have Mandy lose the title to Roxanne. I mean, they already kind of. Uh, had a title match. Yeah, they did. But, you know, her being the underdog, I kind of her being the one to beat Mandy. But that, with that, you know, I don't think it's going to happen, honestly. I think it's going to be somebody on the, the roster itself. And if it's Alba Fire, all the power to her. I'm cool with it. I just think somebody, I don't know. If they, I don't know. I'm just very indifferent to Alba Fire beating Mandy. I'm fine with it. But I'm just, I think someone better should beat, beat Mandy. I'm not saying Alba Fire is bad. She's not. I just think, you know, I would have somebody different. My personal thing, I would have somebody different beat Mandy. But that's just me. Do I think she's losing? Yes. That's my final prediction. Yes. I think Mandy Rose is losing. All right. Interesting, honestly. In my case, I actually have, uh, we've actually, but there's been many times where we predicted Mandy Rose to lose and then she didn't. Yes, I know. That's why I'm picking her to lose anyway, so she'll retain. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my end, I'm going to go with Mandy Rose retains the title and she makes it to one year as <laughs> champion. All right, cool. All right. Let's well, once again, we're 50-50. And now, folks, we're going to move on to the next match. That's the ladder match that we were talking about earlier. For the vacant NXT North American Championship. Or should we call this the Scareway to Hell match? Now, watch them call it Scareway to Hell, and they're not going to give us credit. Which, we didn't come up with the name, but still. <laughs> yeah, you we know didn't what? even go with it. We were just saying you should just go back to it, because that's, you know, we're trying to do Halloween-themed stuff here. Imagine us having our own stipulated match in the Losers' Lounge. Hmm, what are we called? Yeah. The Losers' Pet. By the way, I forgot to mention something. Folks, you cannot see this, but Willie, you made some amazing jack-o'-lanterns in here. Oh, I did. Yes, I did. See, they're right over there. Yep, they look great. <clears throat> yeah. I'm glad you decided oh, not to bring in... I'm, I'm, I'm glad you decided not to bring in the fake spiders, because you know I'm severely scared of them. Yeah, yeah, don't you worry. That's coming next year in 2023. What? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Forget it. Forget what you said. <laughs> All right. There's five participants... In the North American title ladder match, the title is vacant because Carmelo Hayes lost the championship to Solo Sokoa. Yeah, he did. And then and Solo was yeah. forced to give it up because he was not even supposed to be in the match. Then why did you put the ma- You know what, never mind. <laughs> yeah, he was not sanctioned to compete. It was supposed to be Wes Lee, if you recall. Yep, then he got attacked and destroyed. But I just like how Solo <laughs> was like, okay, yeah, I, that's fine, I, I can get rid of it. I already did what I wanted to do anyway, so bye. So, Carmelo Hayes, Wesley, Oro Mensah, Von Wagner, and Nathan Fraser. And out of all these guys, only Carmelo Hayes has been the NXT North American champion. He's held it twice. Two. 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 There you go, two. Second place of most title wins behind only Johnny Gargano. Yes, sir. Johnny Gargano. He's not in the main roster. 
if you look at Johnny Gargano's first two NXT North American title reigns, they give you less than three weeks combined. Exactly. Four days and 14 days, 18 days combined. I'm like, wow. But then you got his third reign, which lasted almost six months. Yep. And that shit's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It was. There it was. Yes, sir. And now, folks, we could have, I think for this case, all I can tell you right now is, no, not Carmelo Hayes again. I love Carmelo, but I think it's time to call him up. Actually, I got a better idea. What you got? Have him be the one to dethrone Braun Breaker. If, yes. if assuming Braun Breaker retains the title. That is true. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, how great would that be? Yes, please, because Melo has it. No, literally, Melo's great. Yep. Anyways, let's talk about the other participants. We got Wesley, formerly of MSK. Please bring that the other guy back. Bring my Nash Carter. Hashtag rehire Nash Carter. I what? think they will. Trust me, folks. They will. Yeah, why did the hell why yeah, the hell did I call him that other guy? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I remember his name. Surprisingly I did. Alright. Uh Von Wagner is also in it. Next. Don't care. Wow. Nathan Frazier. I like him. And Oro Mensa. Am I even saying um, am I even saying that right? He's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's the right name, yeah. Yep. And these people, name is Oreo, these people qualified name. to be in the match. <laughs> yep. Like we got Oromensa. Yep. Who defeated, to Willie's delight, Grayson Waller. Nobody cares about Grayson Waller. Next. West, Wesley beat Tony D'Angelo. Tony D, my guy, had a very it's a good match. It wasn't a match. Like he got hurt. So it was Von, more to let Wesley. Yeah. Von Wagner, on the other hand, beat Andre Gross. Chase. Love our, no, no, screw Andre Chase, too. No. <laughs> and, and Nathan issue. Fraser beat Axiom. Great series of matches, ladies and gentlemen. Can we go back and relive them? Very, very good. By the way, Axiom, what the hell is that? Isn't that the ship from Wally? Yes. Wait, what? No, yeah, I don't, yeah, that's I don't a, know. Yeah, that's a <laughs> ship that from the Wally movie. Oh, Axiom. That's funny. Have you even seen that movie? The movie about the robot? Yeah, the Pixar film, Wally. Oh, of course I've seen it. I was about to seen. say, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I haven't seen it in years. Oh, well, it's on Disney Plus. Oh, there you go. That works. I mean, guarantee it'll probably be a lot better than She Hulk. Okay, that's a terrible comparison. Anyways, though, <laughs> that was horrible on my part. Why the hell did I bring up She Hulk? Anyway, I'll say for this case, we'll have we can each pick two. <laughs> Predictions for right. this match. Let's do it. So, my two picks. Number one, Wes Lee. And number two, Carmelo Hayes. I'm going to go with... As I said, I'm going to go with Wes Lee. Just Wes Lee. There's nobody else you can win, honestly. Okay, that's a fair point on that. No, there's nobody else. Carmelo doesn't need it. I guess the only person who could use it is Na uh, Nathan Frazier. That's about it. Why, why not Bob He's Wagner? the only one I can see winning the title. Why not Von Wagner? Von Wagner? Because yeah. he has no personality, he's boring as heck. Why, why not Oro Mensa? Too soon. Alright folks, we're going to move on to the main event. This is a triple threat match for the NXT Championship. Oh uh, yeah, that's what's up. We got Braun Breaker defending against Ilya Dragunov <laughs> and JD from NY. Uh, question. Wrong person. What? Oh, sorry. Look, 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 I mean... Look, yeah. JD, Josh's dog. The dog of Long Night Josh. No, no, that's a sweet, sweet animal, but no. Wrong thing. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JD Mc, Mc, uh, Mc, Mc, do, don't McDougal's, Mc, Mc, don't Google me, Mc, do, McDonald's, Mc, Big Mac. JD we'll, just Mc call, we'll just call him JD McBig Mac. That's what I call him. Yeah, JD McBig Mac. Because I just see McDonald's, and I'm like, okay, JD McBig Mac. McDonald's rules. Enough said. Sounds like a better <laughs> version of that anyway. So, oh, in this case, we got the former. He's actually formerly known as... Jordan Devlin. Dan Ballard Jr. And that's what the JD stands for anyway. Yeah, that's what it means pretty much. I actually like JD McDonough. That just sounds pretty cool. Yep. All right. JD McBig Mac and Ilya Dragunov. Yep. Oh, the guy who beat Wolter to win the NXT UK title and break in the two and a half year reign. What a rain it was. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. 
And then you got Braun Breaker, who's been NXT champion since the night after WrestleMania, but for whatever dumb reason in March, you know, lost it to Dolph Ziggler for like three weeks and got it back and held on to it ever since. We don't talk about that. Actually, yeah, we gotta talk about those. Dolph as NXT champ was so shocking. <laughs> that was so stupid, actually. It was weird. Yeah, My because it, it didn't make so. any sense. Braun Breaker was doing fantastic, and if you were trying to build him up more, then why not wait until that moment to give him the title then? Correct. Because, seriously, that's not even cool. It's Dolph Ziggler. This shit is in me! Anyways, I like Dolph Ziggler. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, folks. Um, so this is the last match. We're going to get into it because we got a lot, I got a lot of stuff to do as well. So. Me too. And besides, after the big celebration of our 100th podcast, I must say thank you guys for everything. Love you people. Yep. No, really. We really, we really. That's me. We... <laughs> But personally, we, we love you guys. Seriously. Personally, despite the competition we got, I believe Braun Breaker will retain his championship and once again prove himself to be that dominant champion. Uh, this is a tough one for me. I don't see JD McDonald pants winning. I don't see Ilya winning. Yeah, give it to Braun Breaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov, I'm just hoping does not take the pin though. Nah, that's gonna get a JD McHappy meal. <laughs> I mean, so many McDonald's <laughs> references. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald McJD McDonald. Oh, Christian, you forgot you forgot the, the catalyst in this whole thing. Yeah, exactly. That purse, that big catalyst, the guy who could be the NXT champ. You know, I changed my prediction. The NXT champion is going to be Austin Theory. A-Town. A-Town. Down. down. Let's go. A-Town down. Screaming down, out loud. Screaming out loud. I know well, certain somebody's listening to our podcast. Well, I'll be perfectly honest. I think this is the only believable way that he could be cashing in the briefcase anyway. And, and you forgot this too. He would be the first person in history. This has never happened to cash in on the NXT championship and win it. That is also true. And I will That's say that happened. Austin Theory could make history, but at the same time, better do that than try and beat Roman Reigns because that's never happening. I think this is their way of having him successfully cash in. So, I th yeah, I'm going to go with Braun Breaker. But, but, then A-Town hits, and then A-Town cashes it. Does he cash it successfully? Yes. I would have him cash it successfully. Yes. I agree, too. Braun Breaker to retain. So, yeah. Or maybe Austin Theory adds himself into the match, making it a four-way, and pins probably JD or Ilya. Poor JD. He just says he gets the end of the sack tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. Jaden McChicken Nuggets. Okay, you're making me home for McDonald's. And funny, funny enough, there's actually McDonald's right next to me, so. I'm assuming you're going to head over there? Yes. Right, actually, well. there's a Walmart right next to me, so what they put the McDonald's in, so I'm okay. So let's I, wrap this up. <laughs> I have not had McDonald's in a long time, but that's because I'm on a crazy diet now. Oh, there you go. There you go. Anyways, that was our predictions to NXT Halloween Havoc. Thank you guys so much for the support of 100 episodes. Like I said, man, it's been incredible. It's been an incredible ride these past few years, man. We ain't stopping. It's just been the two of us. It's been a twosome ever since. But you know what? We're still going to continue doing this for you guys because we appreciate it. We love you guys for stopping by and listening to us, even for a little bit. You don't have to listen to our entire episodes. But we appreciate that you guys are here listening to what we do. And we're and outside of this, like, I really have nothing else to do. So this is my pastime. <laughs> I'd stop, like, you know, hanging with my boys, you know, chilling out and stuff like that on Skype, FaceTime, whatever. This is my this is my escape route, and I love getting on here with Chris and, you know, and hanging out, talking what we love, and that's professional wrestling, and uh, we appreciate you guys for coming along with the ride, on this ride with us. And this is not the end. This is just the beginning of the Losers' Lounge, 100 oh, yeah. episodes, and yep. this is just the beginning. Yep. Next week, folks, we'll be back to review the events of NXT's Halloween Havoc, and we could be talking about yet another crazy wild ride. Exactly. And I can't wait for that ride. In the meantime, folks, uh, Heel Balor, you know what to do. Well, we're the losers. This is our lounge. Thank you once again for 100 episodes. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>